Good morning. Welcome to the Long Live Alternative Parties podcast. Free Press Media Press Inc. and Alternative Parties Books Publisher sponsors this podcast. I'm Andrew Bouchard. Welcome to the Long Live Alternative Parties podcast. Today, friends, we have another exciting guest on this podcast. She's Her name is Ginger Pierce, and she's going to talk about all the exciting things she does. She does. So welcome to the podcast, Ginger. Hi. Good afternoon. Ginger, let's get started by kindly giving us an introduction to yourself, a brief biographical sketch. A uh, brief biographical sketch. I'm from ra- raised in central Ohio, spent uh, 30 years in Arkansas uh, by way of the military. Uh, I attained the rank of sergeant as a public affairs uh, specialist and been interested in what's going on in the world, pay attention to it, have pretty uh, distinct opinions, <laughs> and uh, done a little bit of everything, uh, everything from being a combat medic at first, public affairs, sold a lot of uh, wet stones and sharpening stones and uh, jars, and uh, even clerked ROTC for a little while. Oh. Uh, currently in the medical field. Okay. And uh, doing home health. So. Home health. Oh, good. My mom has done that. She did that mm-hmm. oh, for many years. Many years she did that. So I'm very familiar with that, and I know all that entails. So we applaud you for doing that. It's absolutely been a joy. Good. It's awesome. It's appealing to you. Mm-hmm. So, Ginger, please tell our audience what you represent, what political organization, affiliation, background. Uh, I have uh, been a registered Republican since I was 17 and a half. My first vote was for Ronnie Reagan. Oh. Um, um, very much a Reaganite. Um, I'm fairly conservative. Uh, I'm definitely not on the far right side. There's some probably more moderate than some conservatives would like, uh, but I do believe in conservative uh, fiscal responsibility, uh, personal responsibility. Okay. Uh, I'm, I don't know if I'm pro-life or pro-choice. I am anti-abortion for birth control. How's that? Huh. Uh, <laughs> I've done a yeah, um, there's a time and a place, and um, I think that whole realm needs some clarification and some name changes for things. But uh, aborting a perfectly healthy child right before birth is insane. Um, uh, I firmly believe that uh, we need some term limits. Okay. Um, and a lot of people will say, well, your vote is your term limit. With the amount yeah. of money involved in politics today, our vote is no longer a term limit. Hmm. Um, you know, people seem to miss, and I wonder how many people realize, Gavin Newsom is Nancy Pelosi's nephew. Yes. You know, um, that man does not need to be president. <laughs> we hmm. do not need what he's done to California, done to this country. Nancy sh- should not be in office. And she's planning to run again. Uh, God bless uh, Diane Feinstein, but she was there too long. Uh, it's a yeah. shame that she's passed away while she – and in office. I bet I haven't been paying attention this morning. I've been doing other things. But I'll bet California is just on fire right now politically trying to figure out who they're going to put up for that seat. It's going to yeah. be interesting. And but the Demo- the left money has got that state. And so, can we tell our audience what page you operate on Facebook? Um, we the people, um, the U.S. petition regarding term limits. Uh, okay. I went through at one point. Oh, it's been a couple of years now, so it's a little dated. But I went through the list of every uh, sitting senator and representative at that oh time and found out how long they had been in office. And the number of people who have been in office 
for more than 25 years is astounding. I don't think our founders had that in mind. Uh, even George Washington, uh, when he was president, in his farewell speech, I believe it was, mentioned that he you know, kind of hoped that everybody would be the citizen politician. And we've gotten far, far away from that, especially since um, President, uh, uh, not Theodore, but uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt, uh, so much so. I mean, four terms, somebody got smart and got that handled real quick. And yes, everybody wanted to have, you know, Ronnie, they were, can we revoke this amendment so that we can vote for Ron again? No, that's not the point. You know, the point is to have the revolving system. And these people who have been there forever and ever and ever and a day, it's money. And they're, they don't, there's no reason to have billionaires whose whole career has been politics because they're not making that much money from their salary. And, yeah, they're going to write a book or two, but there are some people in there who made a lot of money for being a politician that it's just ridiculous. Yeah, it needs to be changed. And the only way to do it is to change it all over is to either fire all of them, and there are a few of them that should be fired. Hmm. Uh, a few? But, a few, yeah. And, um, you know, and then everybody starts talking about ages. And it's not about ages. And let's look at Diane Feinstein. Let's look at uh, our current sitting president. Uh, cognitively, those two people should not have been, in, should not be in office. I'm sorry mm. that Diane died, but she should have spent this time with her family since her last sure. medical situation. Sure. Um, but um, I think there should be a cognitive test. Um, mm. I deal with people of all ages every day. And I have some people who are octogenarians who are more cognitive, cognitively adept than some of my 60-year-olds. Good to hear that. But, but I have some 60-year-olds. Yeah, and so I have some 60-year-olds who are in really bad cognitive shape, and they shouldn't be in office, and they shouldn't be handling a job. Sure. Uh, you know, there there is a problem. It doesn't, and then you look at Mr. Fetterman. You know, should his doctors have released him to this type of work? You know, I know they can take care of us. You know, they recommend don't take a job for you know physical things quite a bit. And I know that they often can say you are not mentally fit either. And I know we can do what we want, but and try to do a job that we're probably not fit for. And the general purposes and the general population, if you had the cognitive ability of uh, Diane or uh, Mr. Biden right now, you wouldn't have a job. True. True. With Mr. Biden's current situation, I want to know who's actually running the country. Hmm. Because that man is not capable. Who do you think is? Do you have any... Speculation? <laughs> uh, I'm afraid to find out, um, and there's no way to dig it down huh. because so I'm, it's not obvious I'm not, in this case. It's not. It's not obvious. Everybody has their suspicions, and it's out there. And you can listen to um, every podcast in the universe, and unless you have a little bit more in the know or don't have a, another job, you can spend your time doing all of that. That's one thing. Okay. But, uh, Okay. Um, might be able to figure it out, but no, I firmly believe that term limits, uh, an official term limit needs to be enhanced. And a lot of those sitting people don't want such a thing and they don't want to bring it up. Um, and I think we have this lovely thing called, uh, now I can't remember what it's called. Isn't that awful? Um, but a constitutional, uh, amendment needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And it's all done, you know, it, it's, it's the people who ultimately vote. Unfortunately, our representative government, this is where it fails us a little bit, um, because we're trusting our elected officials, who unfortunately are in there more because of money these days than anything else. And if they're not doing what the population wants, you know, we have to wait for the most part, or put a recall on them for elections. And we've seen how well recalls have happened 
uh, look at Gavin Newsom. Um, you know, the the, pa- the power behind these people has taken the power of our vote away. And hmm. the only way I think we're going to have to be able to restore it is to implement term limits, especially where the uh, states are concerned or the federal government is concerned because they're not going to do it on their own. But somehow or another, we need to get it directly back to the people. Uh, on my Facebook page, uh, on there, there is a link to my proposed amendment, which okay. would uh, eliminate – or uh, not eliminate, but reduce the amount of time that a uh, sitting politician to 24 years. 24 years, and, okay. Yes. And – and that's a com- that can be combined. That can be time in the House and time in the Senate. Then that's fine. But it's a total of 24 years. And okay. but and th- it does give one perk. If you spend 24 years in one or the other or both, you still get to retire with your federal retirement of 25 years. You get that one year bonus. You get your 25 years oh. for retirement. And you don't get that until. You retire from whatever other job you're doing. <laughs> you know, it, it's just the federal system, you know, retirement policy. Just because you retired, if you're in the military, you retire when you're 40. After 20 years, they changed it. You don't start automatically getting your retirement the day you leave the service, if I remember correctly. Now you get it when you retire in your 60s. It's your full retirement age. Huh. So you better go back to work or write a few books, and that's fine, but nobody should spend more than 25 years in D.C. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, yeah a lot but of our audience is, knows, I'm sorry, go ahead. The problem is that the constitutional amendment, it needs to go back to the states. Uh-huh. And um, and the way it's set up is that um, we, because of representative government, uh, the people themselves, it's a little convoluted either the the representatives and the the Congress, the full Congress, the full legislature are the ones that are representing this and get to have the vote. We get to vote, ratify it, but there's a little bit of a cheek in it. And my wonder is, hey, can't we get a petition going for the states, have a popular vote? This is the, you know, this is the amendment that we, the people, would like to have. Think about it. There are three branches of government, executive, legislative, and judicial. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, there are three branches, you know, of the state, of the country, too. You have the federal government and the state government and the local government. Well, we also have the um, the federal government. And when you talk about local government, you also got to put we, the people, we are part of this. So can, and I can't get an answer, and I'm going to have to either read some more or find myself find myself in conversation with Jonathan Turley. That would tickle me to death. Is there a way that the people can, can invoke a constitutional amendment and start the process with a popular vote by state and the popular vote, two-thirds of the popular vote required to say yes, and then that state vote is yes, and then the states present that to the Congress, so and they have to vote what their constituents, their you know the what the popular the uh, supermajority of each state is, mm-hmm. and the only vote that they have personally is in their state for what they want their state to do. Then the results of that state make the vote for each of those representatives and senators and mm-hmm. it, you know then it should go forward at that point you know and then come back and then we ratify and uh, the ratification has to go along with what the state popular vote was there is no chance for the governor to deny a ratification if his state has said yes huh. okay but, and I know that I'm talking very uh, layman, but I am a layman on my history, so I'm not a historian. I did not major in history. I love it, 
and I love to read and I love to learn. But uh, something has to happen there. And I'm, you know, I'll go back to um, the abortion side of it, things. Uh, I'm of the opinion right now that it's they turned it back to the state. The Supreme Court did. I think they should turn it back to the people. If the polls are correct and 70% of America population thinks that abortion at 15 weeks is okay, but the politicians are saying, nope, six weeks, well, huh. there's, a, there's a misstep there. And I think it's time to get the A word off of the party platform. Huh. I think it's time to turn it over to a popular vote. Huh. And I don't know why that isn't happening, and I know I know why it's not because of the representative. But who says that it has to be our elected representatives who vote on this only? You know, it's it's such a huge issue. I don't think it belongs on the popular or on the in the in the party platform. I think I think if we took responsibility directly in a popular vote and get that off the platform, they might have some time where they can spend some more time actually affecting laws that you know truly need handled by a representative government. But I think they're a little too deep into our personal lives with this one, and I think it's time for a vote. Good. Somebody once said, "You're asking people to vote about murder. I, we vote about murder all the time. Sure. <laughs> we vote about a lot of things. Um, you know, yeah. If that's what it takes, that's what it takes. And it's time to get it several things off of the platform, so that number one, the people are happy with happier with it. Mm-hmm. Feel like they actually had some effect." You know, I can write my uh, congressman 150 times a day, and if he doesn't believe in me or what half of, you know, say more than half of his constituents agree with what I agree with, there's evidently nothing to say he's going to actually do anything for us. We've seen it before, and whoever's paying them behind the scenes or affecting them, this inquiry yesterday the the left and the, the left and democrats the liberals whatever you want to call them um were sure upset about having that inquiry yesterday the open uh, inquiry for the impeachment of mr biden and uh, like they had no clue that that's what the first hearing was about was to have quote non-witnesses non-fact witnesses and they just did this two and a half years ago. They should know how the second got for it. <laughs> yeah. So, what they're trying to get away with, I, 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 you know, somebody asked them to uh, include the, the Webster's Dictionary definition of hypocrisy. <laughs> mm. <laughs> ah, that was a laughing moment for me. I was like, yes, I agree with that. And that. Uh, you know, we've gotten a little silly. There's a lot of people with a lot of money running this country who aren't paying attention to the persons who are not making a lot of money. Most of us, if we're lucky, work every day, pay our bills, and try to save a little bit. Most of, more, too many of us don't succeed because too many people getting money from God knows where are in charge and not really paying attention to anybody but themselves. Hmm. Very opinionated, I understand. Unfortunately, I seem to share this opinion with a lot of people and we are upset and floundering and don't see help coming. And I put that back Go back to term limits. There are too many people who don't belong in those positions or who've had them too long. And, you know, with age comes wisdom. Absolutely. I agree with that. But the wisdom to know that 
we need to share this wisdom with the younger upcoming people because these people who've been there for 33 years, like Ms. Pelosi, she's been there 33 now. It's getting really close. Yeah. If it's not 33, um, she should be sharing that wisdom. The system shouldn't be so uh, convoluted. There's too much extra stuff going in, too many favors owed that they can't seem to pass it on because we can't tell everybody the secrets. Well, there shouldn't be the secrets and the pathways and there should be the running of government. Yeah. And it's not that right now. And part of the reason I think they can't let go is because some of them are too full of their, too full of their own self, mm-hmm. uh, too big for their own britches. Um, but they haven't told anybody how the, how the system operates because I don't think we really want to know how much it operates the way it is. If we knew more real truth, it would be nice. We could have a lot more truth in government if our governing was passing along appropriately, and it's not. It should it should be an open book. That office should be an open book. Any one of those state representatives or congressmen and women should be able to be replaced with the next representative very smoothly because it should be a very succinct situation. This is this is these are the rules. This is what we're working on now. This is what hasn't worked. This is what's worked. This is what the people want. This is what the people don't want. Get on with the business of governing. And they're too busy doing too much other crap. And they can't pass it on. And it shouldn't be that way. Have you looked into what other countries do for office tenures? Are the term limits a popular policy worldwide? Do you have any model? Worldwide, to... worldwide, no. I don't have a model to point to. Um, I just haven't investigated it that direction, and maybe that's the direction I need to go. What else is working better elsewhere? Sure. Uh, I'm sure there's some uh, term limits somewhere that I just don't know about. Um, I know Mr. Trudeau has been in office for quite a while and been hmm. – what now, I can't tell you how many years he's been in office as premier. I just honestly don't know. There was a mention on something I watched last night that he's been doing this for a blessedly long time, and it's time for a change there as well. Yeah. And so, you know, I know there are some other countries who are not far behind us as far as wanting to do things. Um to streamline their government. That's what it, the government needs streamlined. There are too many people in D.C. Uh, D.C. should never become the home of any of our representatives. I don't think that they should. I think it should be a bunch of rentals or a big dormitory. That would be fun. Hmm. You know, buy one of the big hotels, make a one or two bedroom apartment complex for our representatives and senators to live in while they're there. Yeah, they might want to bring their families, but you know what? That wasn't part of it at first either. Hmm. You go, you spend your time that you you know need to be in the office. They have breaks where they come home to their local constituents, and that's great. Um, of course, everybody did that horseback, and they didn't travel their whole families up to D.C. after they got elected. You know, they bring them up for a vacation to see where they worked. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that either. But... Uh, I don't think, you know, I'm sure they're not giving up their permanent residences back home because they can't. You know, they have to live there and have to spend some time there. Uh, yeah. I think they should spend a little bit more time there. And oh. I sure as heck don't think that uh, they ought to, I don't think they should be investing in moving into D.C. I think D.C., especially since the Second World War, uh, has become too much of a resident. You know, it should have not gone the way it has because that's contributed I think to the situation sure you know sure uh, they're going, when they go home to visit they literally go home to visit how many people actually have their homes their main home in their state and that's where their family stays while they come to work and work for the country work for their for their state at the federal level 
you know, um, I understand, you know, parenthood and this, that, and the other. There are people who are in business, have businesses, where one parent or the other is away for a period of time. Um, I experienced it. There were times when my spouse was out for up to six weeks at a time because the business he was helping to operate had a location and he had to be there. I stayed home and raised teenagers. You know, and he helped telephonically and <laughs> we got some things done. You know, I still raised a doctor and a teacher. It can be done wow. and it doesn't, you know, uh, and it doesn't matter which spouse it is. You know, you make the decision if one of you is going to work out of state, one of you is going to work out of state. So you make that decision. But no, going back to it, term limits need to be done. Uh, it needs to be brought to the states because I don't think our representatives and our legislature, they're, they don't want to give up their jobs. And I get it, but there is no reason to be there more than 25 years combined. And uh, if we could do that, we could streamline a lot. The federal government bills go way down real fast. Sure, sure. And 25 years is enough time. It's not like you're saying five years. It's, it's, right. It sounds like there's enough time. You know, there are a lot of people who are represent representative term is only two years. Yeah. You, know, you spend the first year actually trying to do something, and the second year trying to get reelected. Yeah, unfortunately. You know, you know that's and it's and again it goes down to money. Uh, you look at the backings of the people. So let's consider the squad, the people that backed them. Uh, I still think, uh, I, w I still think, I wonder how they came across AOC. Did they pick her because she was cute? Hmm. <laughs> um, she does have a little bit of brains, but she's so driven by her backers. Huh. Interesting. Some people are, I'm glad you see it that way. That's one of the issues that the alternative parties have. Those on the left, they don't think that these people are ideological enough. And yet a lot yeah. of people are going to say that they're ideological. So that's good that you see it that way. I don't know that AOC is really ideological. I think she is following a script that was given to her by her backers. I don't know how much of it she believes necessarily other than I'm getting a paycheck and I'm representative and I'm supposed to be smart and I'm cute and I'm smart. Here I yeah. am and these people pull it, are backing me. Uh, you know, no. Uh, a few years ago she was crying about uh, children being kept in cages, but she's not crying about children coming across the border and disappearing. Huh. Uh, that's, if you can't see both sides of that coin in her position, and you don't belong in her position. Sure, yeah. Uh, a lot of the kids that were, quote, in cages actually got put probably in a better situation than a lot of the kids that are coming across right now who are just getting released out into the country. We're never going to see some of those kids again. Plan. We can go on to we can go on to immigration if you like. There are laws there are set in place, and until somebody starts enforcing the laws, then our system is broken. And the only reason it's broken is because people won't obey the laws, and that's it's pathetic. You know, it's it's as bad as the smashing grabs, uh, smashing grabs that are going on. It's just as lawless as that. Mm -hmm. You're ignoring the laws, and you're not punishing people for it by you know. I'm sorry, I understand that everybody wants to come here, uh, but there is a method and a procedure and a way to do so Man, for everybody, whether they're asylum seekers or just people looking to come to come here hmm. you know, from where they are. Uh, there is a process, and all of the, what, 40 or 50,000 have crossed in the last week? All those people are doing, you're preventing any, you know, that Group another 50,000 people from getting in, you know, who are in line.
from getting in. Mm. People who could be good for the country. And some of the people coming across could be good for the country. That's fantastic. But there is nothing being done. So many people are coming across. And, you know, do they have a list of court dates for everybody? I would sure like to see one produced. <laughs> they say that that's what they're doing, but we have no proof. Mm. And uh, too many of those people are coming across that river in pretty new clothes, pretty brand new clothes, phones, the works. Uh, how many of these people are, you know, uh, and they're paying thousands, tens of thousands of dollars to come here to the cartel? Wait a minute. And I thought these were the poor, impoverished uh What's the word? You know, people seeking asylum, they've got, you know, repression and this, that, and the other. Where are they buying? Where are they coming up with the money to buy that? Is it their, the work of their family? Is it, the, you know, are they under basically indentured servants once they come here? And who are they paying? And who is housing them? Uh-huh. You know, it, uh, there is no reason for our border to be open like it is. And it's time to put an end to it. Do you think that relates to term limits? Your contentions with the immigration issue, is that related to term limits directly? I think so, because if we can get term limits and get people to stick with doing the law, then maybe we can get people to (laughs) start enforcing the laws that we've got in place. You know, um, there, there are too many little pet projects that they're too busy doing, I I could see where, yes, term limits could affect some of these things. Okay, so they get diverted by all the other stuff instead of what you think is the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah, I I would have to agree with that. There's too many other things that they are doing. You know, I I understand we do need to have, you know, international relations, um, there are things, you know, junkets that they need to go on. I get it. Uh, you have to go see your business partners. That makes sense. Well, you do that when government's not in session. There you go. And, and, and you know, and, but um, everybody, a lot of people are concerned about isolationism. Well, we need to isolate a little bit. We cannot give money to everybody, then we don't have any for ourselves. True. And we are we may not be giving away as much foreign aid right now, but we sure are spending a lot of money on foreign aid when it comes right down to it mm. with the amount of illegal immigrants who don't have work visas. They don't have any place to go to be, and so we're all paying for it. We'd all be paying for it whether it were state, local, or, or federal, but this is a federal situation because they're letting the people just run rampant through. They're not stopping them. They're not having them remain in Mexico. Um, They're supposed to, you know, isn't the asylum seeking, you start seeking asylum from the country you're in, and you go to the next country that's bordering you, and you seek asylum there, and then if you want to come to the States, you start working on how you get to the States. You don't come from Brazil or Argentina and come to the U.S. and say, I'm seeking asylum. That's not how it's supposed to work. Hmm. You don't come from the Middle East to the Mexican border and cross illegally. That's not how it's supposed to work. And I guess I guess if you go on a vacation to the southern border, you know, <laughs> and you take a roundabout way to get there, uh, you can do it that way. Um but uh you know to to be able to work to go from country to country to country unimpeded, we need some mm. help from the other countries out there um who are letting these people just you know walk right up. I mean, they talk about the uh passageway in Panama that's supposed to be so horrific. Well, why are they letting people why is Panama why are Latin American states letting these people just walk up through their country. Are they truly just 
you know, walking up through the, through these countries that way, they, sh- you know, from when they pictures of them we get from the border, they don't look like they've traveled so harriedly. <laughs> um, what are they doing in the process of taking that trip? Did they, you know, are they being handled by the cartels and cartels are bringing them up and staging them as they come up? That needs to stop. Yes, we need to help our partners in our local, uh, more local, I guess, neighboring countries in, in some respects, but uh, I can't remember, can't decide how I want to go with this. <laughs> sure. I apologize. It's okay. But, uh, yeah, um, term limits would be a good start. Um, if we can get people in there who want to come in there to do the work of the people in the government for the people, it would be a lovely change of pace. Sure. <laughs> and not go in there to do whatever they want to and make all the money they want to. And they, I just. That's not what it was intended to be. It was not to give power to a few. True. It was to give power to the people through representation. <clears throat> but the the money behind uh, the platforms and the wants are dictating to the people who we can vote for. Okay. That's a good way to put it. And And that's not how it's supposed to be. You know, I understand backing a candidate. I understand an organization backing a candidate. But I don't understand huge amounts of money that are going toward keeping a candidate and not offering any other options. They offer so much money for this one person because they're in of the two-party system. They won't back a Libertarian or Green Party. You know, let's let's start backing people who can do the job, yeah. not just the job you want, but can actually govern, can actually make decisions, actually have some brain power, solution ability, good ideas, and stop BSing all of us. Yeah. And we have a lot but, of smart people in this country who could do a lot better job of doing the job. That's true. And do it for what it's supposed to be done. Doing the job and doing it effectively. Keeping our country safe. Making sure our laws are being obeyed. Making good laws and getting rid of the bad laws. Yeah. So, Ginger, towards those ends, how can our audience support your efforts to get this term limits amendment to the people? Uh, I think it needs to start with um, to, get, to getting such an item on the ballot. And that, okay. starts, with, that starts with a petition for signatures. Right. And, um, and it varies state to state how, yep. what percent of, vo- of the voters need to sign. Uh, and so that can get Pretty some pretty steep numbers really really quickly. Um, the one thing that and you have to you have to verify. Yeah. Any signature that is gained must be verified, and then that person's got to be a registered voter. By yeah. golly, it doesn't take anything to register to vote today. You can do it when you get your driver's license, uh, get your state ID at the DMV. Uh, there's no excuse having a driver. I don't care if you're purple and a zebra identifier, you can get a state ID. Okay? Uh, Anybody out there who says that uh, there's a whole 13% of the population that are, can't get their drive, can't get a state ID of some sort, uh, this is 2023, uh, unless they live on a mountain in the middle of Montana, they can get a state ID, and I'll bet that person has one. <laughs> hmm. um, that, that, there's, you have to, I mean, you can't buy a beer, you can't buy a pack of cigarettes. Uh, what else do you have to show your ID for at the 
gas station for these days. Uh, you can't tickets. have a bank. You can't have a bank account. You have to buy a lottery ticket. Yep, you have to have a state ID or of some sort. And there are plenty of them out there. And a, a picture ID is not that hard. And for those who are conscious, you know, who are uh, don't believe in having their pictures made, there's an ID for that too. State has them. <laughs> okay. You know, even the Amish have state ID. Come on. There you go. So, so for the people who are, want to answer your call to get signatures on signed to get their states this on the ballot. Can they contact you for guidance? Oh, I guess they can go to my website and I can help them get to their local uh, offices, what local offices to go to. Uh, okay. Secretary of State seems to be what I remember being the, the number one starting point on okay, or, the, or the Board of Elections to okay. get the rules for how to get, you know, how many signatures are needed, what you need to get for the signatures. Uh, if I had a lot of money, I was uh, boy just an, a one page a one page uh, eight by ten advertisement in a local paper that they can cut out and send in. Mm-hmm. You know, can we count that as a signature? And I looked into it a little bit, and I don't see why not. But it depends on the state and whether you have to get them in person or if you can literally have a mail in. Uh, if you have a mail in, you will have to. Be, find a way to verify that they're a registered voter and probably check his signature. They're mm-hmm. on file if they're registered. So, uh, so it what is that? Work. It would take a lot of people. It takes a lot of work? It, it's, it's, it's a lot of work, and it's going to take a lot of people. I don't think one person can do it, unfortunately. Okay. Okay. Sure. So what's the... Address if they want to go look for more information on this. What's your website address? I don't have a website. I just have my Facebook page. Uh, okay. Let me, I'm going to have to put you on speaker for a moment. Hang on. Okay. You'll get all of my noise. I apologize. Let's it's okay. See. Let me go out here. Uh, the name of the Facebook page is Petition. Constitutional Amendment, Term Limits, Federal Legislature. Okay, so Petition, Constitutional Amendment, Term Limits, Legislature. Uh, let's see, yeah, Petition, colon, Constitutional Amendment, uh, M dash, Term Limit, comma, Federal Legislature. Okay, I will, I will see that about getting that in our show notes so they can. Look at that for more information and inspiration. All right, great. Well, it was lovely to talk to you. I feel like I've rambled a little bit, but <laughs> I trust your audience will love your information and they will use it to get inspired to act on this or something else. All right. Well, thank you thank so you. much, and appreciate you getting in touch with me and bringing me on. Sure, that's what we're here for, Ginger. All right. All right, I wish you all the best in this and all your other personal professional endeavors. Thank you so much. All right, take care and all the best. All right, bye-bye.